Welcome to another episode on a plant-based production podcast with your host, Skylar Heyman. On this episode, Division I college beach volleyball athletes, Brooke Buckner and Alex Young join the show to talk about the importance of nutrition when training in the heat. Enjoy and be a lifelong learner. Hello and welcome to another episode on a plant-based production podcast with your host, Skylar Heyman. Today we have the lovely ladies from the University of Cal, Miss Brooke Buckner and Alex Young, both <laughs> ex-Wave Beach players. Ladies, wave to the camera. Hello. All hey, right. camera. Stoked to have you guys. Have you ever done a podcast before? Nope. Nope. Cool. So this will be a fun first experience. I love fun first experiences. Um, all right. So you guys have played for Wave and Wave Beach since what year? Do you remember? Since I was 13. 13 and now you're how old 19 almost 20 Nin- so it's basically five years mm-hmm. nice longer than college yeah mm-hmm. that's crazy yeah. i think i started when i was on the tens at wave seriously wow <laughs> so you had like seven years eight years yeah yeah so i've known both of you guys for at least five years and seven years and super pumped to have you on the show and talk about the importance of nutrition in regards to beach volleyball because we all know beach volleyball gets super hot in the summertime, as it is in this room right now. It's like oh, yeah. 80 degrees <laughs> if you're listening. It is a summer day in the beginning of August, and it's super hot. So we're going to sweat this one out together, just like you guys did with Coach Mike at practice. Shout out to Coach Mike for winning uh, in Shout Atlanta. Shout out Coach Mike. Yeah, Coach Woo. Mike, Paul Lottman, and Miles Partain. Coach Mike ha- was on the podcast, and he went to Atlanta and helped Paul and Miles win at the AVP this past weekend. So pretty cool stuff. All right, let's dive into it and discuss kind of the essence of you guys being here and what's the message you guys want to send to the future of female athletes in any sport and maybe specifically to beach volleyball players. Um, I can start this one off. Um, I just want to say like just put your head down and keep grinding because everyone's kind of on their own path and like your time will come to shine. The experiences and the memories, like I can't even tell you if I um, won what tournament or uh, got out of this tournament. Like I just remember the people. And so just kind of enjoy the experience. And like, what do you think female athletes should be doing more of? Like we live in San Diego. You guys are practicing in Southern California. Beach volleyball is super popular here. Mm -hmm. Alex, you've grown up playing some ice hockey, which is pretty rare for a female. Yeah. Especially in SoCal. Brooke, you've grown up around sports. I know your brother is a quarterback at the University of Notre Dame. Like where outside of Southern California do female athletes need to be focusing more on? Um, I would probably go with... um, factors that are like in your control. So I would say focusing on sleep, nutrition, recovery, stretching, yeah. taking time to make sure you're um, mac- maximizing your performance. Um, I think strength and conditioning can only go a long way. And like you really need those other things that are in your control to give you an edge. Yeah, I say I agree with that. And like, and obviously like plant-based production is like about nutrition and stuff. So I would really emphasize like nutrition and like getting in proper sleep and just like putting yourself in like a good environment, like the like people you talk to, like interact with, like all contribute to like how you how far you get in like life or like your sport or whatever and stuff like that. So yeah. Where do you guys rank beach volleyball? in physicality like challenging your body in comparison to maybe softball or soccer women's basketball women's tennis like how hard do you think beach volleyball is um i have definitely played a lot of sports growing up i played ice hockey competitively i played softball tennis basketball swimming and i would say beach volleyball obviously it's not a like contact sport so it's not super physical but you can like put yourself in the game like from the service line or like at the net like I'm I'm like pretty short for like a beach volleyball player but like I would say I'm pretty physical like at the net like I can get up and block a ball or like serve tough at the end line and it's definitely like hard mentally because it's only two versus two so it is very like 
individual, I would say. And, like, especially, like, before you get to college, it's just, like, it's all you and, like, whoever you want to play with, like, your partners and stuff. But, yeah. Do you think the diving, Alex, you're a defender. So there's usually a blocker and a defender. And in the junior level, when you're kind of learning how to play, you kind of do both. And blocking is not nearly as important as women get bigger in college. Mm -hmm. And then the pros, they're even taller. Um, Would you say, like, diving, um, you take pride in? Like, diving is a physical act. Like, do you guys want to get sandy? Yeah. You do? Yeah. You genuinely do? Yes. I think that's super awesome. And that's why you're on this show. Because you want to go the extra mile. And we encourage that at our club. And you are like wanting to genuinely dive for the ball. I think a lot of athletes yeah. don't. And that's the physicality aspect. Like you want to dive. Then what do you do after you dive? You get back up, right? Yeah. And you hit the ball. And you got to jump and yeah. hit it. And you got to do that over and over again. So when it's 90 degrees, do you feel like you have a mental edge, Alex, when you're like diving and you're like, I am tougher or in better shape than the person across the net? Yeah, definitely. I think like if I... Well, for this is like an instance where it's like if you're playing a team and they're not diving for balls, then you're like, oh, all right, like maybe I can like do not as good of shots or something. And then but if they're touching every ball, then it makes me think like, oh, I need to like get a little bit better at like my shots and stuff. Or like if we're at practice and I'm like touching every ball or like eat like even a touch and like all the other like girls are like, woo, like, yeah, let's go. And it's like nice to like hear that. Because, like, it's good to have support from, like, your teammates and stuff. Yeah, just to add on, like, a touch on a ball, like, showing that effort and pursuit, um, it's really demoralizing, honestly, as an attacker, when yeah. someone, like, you hit a perfect shot and they touch it, even if they um, don't get it up, they're, like, all over it. That just shows you that, like, yeah. they read you like a book, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, just being all out and being aggressive and everything you do on defense um, can really affect the other side. How hard do you guys think it is moving in the sand compared to, you know, indoor volleyball or indoor, you know, basketball? Yeah. So I played indoor all my life along with beach. um, And I would say that um, attacking indoor is definitely um, different. Like it's obviously you can jump way higher and probably hit the ball harder. But I think the, cool thing about beach is that um not only do you have like you can still hit but you can also um shoot and the game is more about like finesse yeah I definitely agree with that I think like when like playing indoor I only played for high school and like I played one year in 13s and beach is just so like you can just run wherever like do whatever like you don't have to like I feel like indoors like you have to pass perfect set perfect where beach is like you can kind of just like do your own thing and like it's more creative yeah definitely more creative and like more physical yeah. yeah do you have to be in better shape to play beach volleyball than indoor volleyball I think so yeah I mean I think there's different levels of fitness yeah. for that sport like maybe strength is more important for indoor volleyball and probably cardiovascularly more you have to be in better shape on the beach just because you're doing more running. Yeah. It's hard when you was watching a practice the other day, I think last week I was there and middle of the summer and it's hot in other places too. It yeah. Was cooking at beach practice, like oh, yeah. 80, 85 easy, the sand super hot and you guys aren't training for your college program. You're not, you know, playing in a tournament and you're still going super hard. So, and you're pretty used to it. Mm hmm. I would say so. We've played in some really hot conditions um, this last past year. Oh, yeah. And Arizona. Played in Arizona. We played in Hawaii. What was Arizona like? I mean, when did you play in Arizona? We played twice there. um, Like a Pac-12. Against the University of Arizona? Yeah. And other Mm -hmm. teams? Two Pac-12 tournaments there. Yeah. It was just like a Pac-12, like, invitational or something. Like, March. 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 And it was hot? Hot. Very hot. Couldn't imagine it being now. Practicing. Yeah, and it's it's really dry out. Yeah, so it's like you're like trying to you have to go get water because you're like it's so <laughs> hot. Like oh my god, but, we get all yeah. And Gulf Shores, wow, that was it was so humid too. Like we played the, at the NCAA's, and I thought I was gonna pass out on the court, but I didn't. So <laughs> yeah, I think you know the conditions are never the same. 
Yeah. It could be really cold. It could be really hot, humid, dry. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of other sports, it's a little more fixed. Yeah. And I think beach volleyball, like, like tennis, when you're out there tennis and you're grinding in a long match, um, male or female, it's very physically demanding and mental. And you have to be well-fueled. You have to be conditioned. You have to be strong mentally and physically. And there's other sports that I think are just a little easier with the mental conditioning as much as physical. I'm not going to mention who because I forget her name. I had a volleyball lesson and this girl was 16 years old from Texas. And it was like one in the afternoon a couple of weeks ago, 20 to 30 minutes into the lesson. She had a huge blister on her foot Oh wow! and it was cooler than our practice. It was probably high seventies and she couldn't finish the lesson. 45 minutes could not go the whole hour. And I forget kind of what it's like to have feet that get blisters in 30 minutes. I'm sure you guys do too. Yeah. So I couldn't really relate. I felt bad. It was her first beach volleyball lesson. She got a blister oh. and she couldn't finish. And I was like, hope she comes back. Yeah. Just, she's like, I'm never going to play show, again. Like I think to the listeners, viewers that beach volleyball takes a certain, you know, grittiness, a toughness that, you know, literally for your feet, they need to be conditioned. It's like walking on lava. Seriously. You know, there's some tribes yeah. that can walk on lava. Yeah. And then this one girl got a blister in 30 minutes. And I. Yeah. Like, oh. And it's sometimes because we, because Berkeley gets like um really cold. Like we have played in like the hottest conditions this year, but also like the coldest where like we wear sand socks. Because it's so cold. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's so cold. Yeah. And we wear sand socks because it's so hot. So we're yeah, just, it's miserable when it's really yeah. cold and you're not warm enough. And you can't feel yeah. your toes. Yeah. You just can't get warm. Yeah. You can't feel your feet or your hands and you can't hit the ball. And yeah, I'm bad. rocking I'm rocking shoes and Uggs sometimes in our winter practices with gloves. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're coaching and standing still, it's oh, even yeah. worse. Uh, so what's the um, maybe progression from the juniors level, which is up till you're 18 and then going into college to the focus on nutrition? Like, do you guys have a nutrition program now in college? Uh, what What's that like? Um, well, we have like a thing called Grab and Go and they like provide snacks for us and like meals every day. And like we can choose if we want that, like we can order ahead and stuff. And then our coaches also provide snacks at practice, which is really nice because like we have three hour practices and like we get really tired and we're like, oh, like maybe we need a little snack to keep us going. But little refuel yeah <laughs> describe yeah. what that snack might be um like protein bars or like the little gatorade chews or pretzels yeah we love the gatorade chews we always have them in our bags <laughs> we have like a million in there yeah um kind of one the biggest difference that i've noticed from going high school to college is that um you have to be more strategic for when you time your meals mm-hmm. um, also and just making sure that you're getting enough. I think you don't realize how much, how many calories and energy you're expending like during those four hour time blocks. And I think in high school I could get by with like a two hour practice kind of not being as fueled, but in four hours of straight activity, you just can't get by and everyone's performing it's really a competitive environment and you want to make sure you're playing your best so you have to really take care of your fueling and nutrition yeah Yeah. do you guys have a nutritionist yeah we do have a team nutritionist and then we have access to one personally if you want to use it and i i used it um a few times this past year can you describe maybe your experience with that and what she recommended or yeah um i think a big thing for me is making sure I'm getting enough. And so um, some things that we've worked on are maybe work um, waking up a little bit earlier so I can get um, two full meals before practice. Um, and then making sure I have snacks in my bag. So she's helped me come up with uh, snack ideas and easy ways to get energy. Um, also, she's emphasized the importance of refueling. Yeah, it sounds like you guys are really structured and busy when you go to college. You don't have parents to look after you, right? So because you're so busy, you're not really like, oh, I need to eat. Like you'll eat when you're hungry Mm -hmm. and then you're like top-notch athletes. So you need to really focus on making sure 
you're fueling your body for when you're performing. Mm -hmm. Like you could probably get through the day with not eating so much and be fine and, you know, do a little homework and hang on the couch with your friends. Then you go into a practice hot or cold. And how long did you say most of your practices are? It's three hour practice and then one hour of weights right after. So you're doubling your practice time from what you've done the last eight years. Mm -hmm. So you went from practicing for two, three days a week for two hours to now four hours, five days a week. Six. Six days yeah. a week. Yep. Yeah. Almost year round. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you're not focused on nutrition and you're just focused on weights, you're going to be in that weight room and you're going to drop the bar on your chest and like hurt yourself. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure what your nutrition is saying is not just only, hey, eat this or that. It's like more timely and just reminders that like you guys are busy. You wake up, go to class, this and that. And it's like, oh, shoot, I didn't eat much. And then you have practice for four hours. Yeah. And if you don't speak up, tell your coach, Hey, I'm hungry or I need some fuel. That's where, you know, if you do that consistently for a day or two week, you'll run into some problems. So. Yeah. I think like, um, in the fall we didn't really have, or our, our coaches didn't really bring snacks, but then a lot of the girls were like, Hey, cause we all have class before because our practice block is like right in the middle of the day. Yeah. So we would go class nine to 11. Then we had practice 12 to four. Yeah. And so that time block, um, brought a lot of challenges just to figure out like when are we going to eat stuff yeah being prepared yes mm -hmm. the six p's is what my fraternity taught me <laughs> proper planning prevents piss poor performance piss yeah because when, <laughs> if you're, you know it's really bad it's an it's it's an exaggerated you know Pee -pee. you could just say yeah bad performance yeah you know and it's you, you guys just how do you do any like superfoods or any crazy juices or anything like have since you've known me and I've been plant-based for five and a half years, has any of that worn off onto you while you're um, away from me? We are like obsessed with press juicery and we love, we always go and get juices and like the little freezes there and like acai bowls and stuff. Shout yeah. out to press juicery. <laughs> yeah. Press let's, juicery. let's sponsor a plant-based production. Yeah. yeah. We'll hit, we'll hit them up. <laughs> yeah. I do um collagen and sometimes like, I don't know if hemp hearts or, mm -hmm. um, I put flax in my oatmeal and stuff. Um, I also think we are trying to get better about including more greens. So we do yeah. a lot of juices. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Did I already say collagen? I do call a lot of collagen. Yeah, I have like good. these little um, little packets from Costco and you just put it in water and it's like greens and stuff. Because I remember, because Brooke and I always share groceries and stuff and we always, you know, we always just, because we're really close like that. And we, in the beginning of the year, we were like, we really don't eat any greens. So then we were like, oh, we need to, we need to change that. So then we got better at that. And like, definitely like having little snacks throughout the day. Cause class is just like in the way of that. And like waking up earlier, maybe I'll be like, Hey, like, do you want me to make breakfast for us or something? But yeah, yeah. there's, there's <laughs> a lot of different ways to eat. You know, you could eat small portions more throughout the day you could eat like one big meal you know fast eat one big meal if you can but you're not going to eat that big meal before practice or any you know so it depends on your lifestyle and i just want people and the listeners to know that you have to figure out what what works for you i think as a whole we eat too much we overeat across america and maybe not as athletes we're just kind of brainlessly eating and then when you get into that athletic realm and that super structured go 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 rat race you you almost forget about eating and that seems like maybe some you know vibe across women's sports it's like well no 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 you need to eat like eat well and eat often and then just kind of be prepared the six yeah. piece you have to like you know take care of yourself now you guys are grown-ups you're adults yeah in the fall we had pretty intense like weight training um, and I was like obsessed with like, I was like, I need to eat so much. I need all this food. But then I wouldn't really care about like, oh, I would care, but I wouldn't really watch like what I would put in my body. And then I was like, ooh, I don't really feel good right now. And I'd go to practice feeling like so tired. Yeah. Making sure you're eating not just enough, but the right foods that make you feel your best. And obviously that takes some trial and error. Um, I know for me, I don't eat a lot of meat before practice um it just makes my stomach feel funny and so yeah. i like to stick with like a carb maybe like a slice of bread with peanut butter and banana or something smaller and lighter 
Um, I love it. What about you? That's a really good one. Carbs are really good for us. I think mm -hmm. that's um, a, a myth, a misnomer. Uh, people, especially women, think, oh, you have to avoid carbs. Carbs are like our main fuel source. According to Colin Campbell, he says 80% of our diet should be carbs. Now that's unprocessed carbs. That's not Wonder Bread yeah. and Oreos. That's like oats or, or a whole slice of bread with like organic peanut butter. Like there you have your carb and your fat and your protein, high sustaining energy. If you have fruit, that's kind of a short burst of energy. Mm -hmm. If you have greens, that's a short burst of energy. So if you're kind of bonking or getting tired, like little piece of fruit, dried fruit, some some green juice or whatever would be really good. Uh, what about you? Any like healthy snacks that you like to take during a tournament in practice that's maybe more on your own as opposed to like the school's providing us Gatorade, chews and pretzels? Yeah, um, I definitely like I saw Brooke have like the toast and peanut butter and like banana and I was like I'm gonna try that so then I started eating that and it was really good and it would like carry me through practice or whatever until like we had like the snacks and I am a big fan of like yogurt and like granola you like pickles and fruit I love pickles yeah I drink I like love to drink pickle juice like with a straw like that's kind of weird but like pickle juice is amazing yeah it's been like I think known in college football when it gets super hot on the sidelines, yeah. Like, you know, to prevent cramps. Yeah. In beach volleyball, when you're running around jumping, what's the first thing that's going to cramp? Your, your legs, your, legs. Your, your your calves and your, uh -huh. your quads. And have you ever had a cramp? Oh yeah. yeah, I've had a cramp on my toe. My toe was like yeah, toes <laughs> cramping, <laughs> like whole Everything. leg cramps. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pickle juice. And yeah. Then, yeah. Pickle juice. Have you guys ever experimented with? In the movie The Game Changers, it's a documentary on Netflix. They talk about beet juice, and beet juice before an activity will increase performance by an X amount of percentage. I did. I need to really. Stat check. Yeah. I oh, I'm gonna. I'm me. gonna get on that. <laughs> so beet juice is really good, according to. Um, and there was a lot of high-end pro athletes and director James Cameron in in uh, Game Changers. So I know beet juice is really good, and according to Michael Greger, cherries are really oh, good yeah. for muscle soreness and anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. So we would get cherries. Yes, yeah, we get cherries and, and then there's like tart cherry juice with no like added sweetener yeah. that you can buy at any grocery yeah. store which is great too. Yeah, so between beet juice before, pickle juice during, cherry juice after, you guys are going to be Holy winning a Trinity. national champion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that so you know when I'm running or working out and you know you try to find that mental edge, right? you guys are playing and you're in a battle and mm -hmm. once you psych yourself out or once you feel like oh wow i'm more fit or i'm better fueled it gives yeah. you that little bit of confidence yeah it is definitely a relief when i'm like i know i slept for nine hours yeah I, my whoop says i'm 92 percent recovered like i'm good to go yeah and, and then on the other end like if you're not feeling good you're like oh shoot i'm about to cramp i'm exhausted like that is yeah you can go down a bad hole yeah so we're going to go a couple more here and then wrap it up. Um, do you guys feel like it's easier to put weight on or put muscle on? Put weight on? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, I, mean, I say put weight on I think on like too. it's easier to just eat than, and it's really hard to put muscle on. I think it's important that yeah. for male or female that, you know, if you want to put muscle on, go for it. Like you should be going for it. Just know that it's very hard. It takes a lot of work and that, you know, eating well is maybe a little more simplistic. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, just eat cleaner, eat more whole foods yeah, and lentils and, you know, organic grains and fruits and veggies and all that. That's like an easy fix where if you want to like get really ripped, I mean, you guys are working out probably more than you ever have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so hard. It's so I mean, hard. I'm sure you think about your physique and like, man, I want to get this and this looking that way. And, yeah. And get my shoulder stronger and faster so I can hit the ball harder mm -hmm. and get my legs stronger so I can jump higher. You guys squat and yeah. all the leg stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, where do you rank or, or give me a percentage breakdown for your focus on nutrition versus strength training? Like, where is your mind right now if you gave me a split on this amount of percent for nutrition or this amount of percent for strength training? Um, I would probably say 70% nutrition for me and 30% strength training. 
Um, I do work out every day, but I think I really have an emphasis now that I'm trying to, I am trying to gain more muscle. Um, I'm focused more on what I'm eating to kind of help benefit. Do you think your weight training is more like maintenance and injury prevention? Yeah, it feels like it is more maintenance just to keep up with the strength that I built like last year at, at Cal. What about you? Um, <clears throat> I would say 55% strength and then 45% nutrition. Um, I think it's important to like be strong and like because you can't get by in high school like not or you can get by in high school like lifting or not not lifting and doing all that but then in college you can't you cannot get by so I think it's really important and that's one thing I learned this year like I got way stronger and like I did see results in the sand but then once I like was why was I as I was just saying (laughs) eating like trying to eat so much food like I felt gross so then now I'm like oh shoot and maybe I should like focus on nutrition more um but yeah that's that's my breakdown. And describe what the juniors tournaments were like and now what college tournaments are like. Are they easier, harder? Um, I would say it's just, yeah, a lot more competitive. I think in juniors, um, you what you what you play like 10 games in one. Yeah. Tournament. Like if you're getting to the finals or something crazy, you're just playing back to back to back a, a lot. lot. Yeah, and- you play a lot. Yeah, I was just in Hermosa Beach and it's a lot of playing. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of volleyball. And I don't think that the quality of volleyball and the level of volleyball is it's obviously not the same as college. Mm-hmm. And so I think college, you have like two, maybe three games in one day. And that's a lot more intense. You're playing to three. Yeah. Your teammates are on the sidelines cheering you on and you have coaches. Yeah. with It's you. definitely like a yeah. lot more pressure because like high school is like, oh, like I see my friend. I'm going to go say hi, whatever. And then college is like, no, I'm here to win. Like, I want to win for my team and, like, for myself. Yeah. And, like, the coaches and stuff like that. So, it's definitely... Do you guys feel like that's a sense of maturity? Yeah. Like, as you guys mature? Yeah. You, like, have more pride and you become less, like, oh, I wish Susie, like, likes me. And now it's like, no, I want to win. Yeah. Like, the sense of ownership. Um, You want to own your whatever. So, beach volleyball... You have a ones team, twos, threes, team three, four, and five. Mm -hmm. And then one plays one and two plays two and five plays five. So you guys like have ownership for whatever you go in and play at. You want to win at all costs. Yeah. Um, Just one thing. I think the biggest difference is just having like the team aspect. Like you have that in college volleyball. Maybe you don't have that in juniors. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, yeah, you always want to win across the board, high school or college. But I think the aspect of like winning for your team, your teammates, the people who yeah. like are working so hard every day with you, like those are the people that you want to play for. Yeah. And no one cares like if you're on the ones or like the mm-hmm. threes or the fours or the fives, like in the twos. But like everyone is like supportive of like one another. And it's like as long as you're like having a good attitude and like playing your heart out, like everyone's like, all right. We're cool so it's super contagious, right? Mm-hmm. In oh, the totally. weight room, pushing each other, just like any program and any sport. Yeah. That's the same. Do you feel like that eating habits can get there? Like you're you're not that like, oh my God, you're eating so well. Yeah. Like there's none of that probably. Although, uh, no. or is there? Like, do you guys kind of like not push each other, encourage each other? Like, not, yeah. I feel like, like sometimes. Is, like you said, nutrition was super important in your breakdown, mm-hmm. whatever the percentage was. Do you feel like you guys could be a catalyst and leaders like, hey, let's eat well. It'll help our program. Yeah, I think it's so hard to kind of do that. in like today's day and age, I think a lot of people struggle with like some sort of yeah. unhealthy relationship with um, food. And I kind of like to stay out of that. But I think, yes, like I think it would be great if we had more team nutrition meetings and kind of offer up suggestions to help performance. But I think. Um, you never know how someone's going to take it. Yeah. Um, it's people, like kind of a sensitive. It is a very sensitive subject. Yeah. And I think like people can get extreme with things and like it's all about balance and like obviously being extreme in any way is never good. So, I mean, trying maybe being plant based is great. It might work for someone. It might not. And maybe. Yeah, that's. Yeah. You really have to study it just like you guys study volleyball. Mm-hmm. That's why you're good. 
you can't just like, oh, let me just eat spinach for a week yeah. and be like, I'm plant based. <laughs> yes. No, that's not a good no, balance. No, you need to do your research. You need to do your research. So it's not like you can't eat plant based, and you know you have to do your research on anything, and especially with nutrition because there's so many different varieties of foods, and there's so much extreme and sensitive opinions on it. Like, um, you know, other significant topics we all need to eat right we all need to eat our whole lives so you know learn i encourage you ladies to learn and continue to learn as i will about food Mm -hmm. because if you want to keep playing in school and then after school and whatever happens the rest of your life Mm -hmm. you keep learning and then you will keep encouraging the listeners your your teammates those you know after you your family members you never know your parents and as you get older, things tend to happen and you want less bad things happening that are out of your control. So you end up doing as much within your control mm-hmm. to lead by example. Yeah. Because if you're not doing it, girls, that no one's going right. to do it first. You guys have to be leaders. And I'm not saying, hey, eat plant-based and get mm-hmm. everyone to eat plant-based. I'm saying yeah. just like you said, trial and error, try different things, see what works for you, commit to it a little bit and really kind of get a feeling of hey, I don't want to eat that burrito before practice. Oh, yeah. Okay, so maybe I eat this. Okay, that's better. And just kind of feel what works for you and then feel free to like suggest to teammates like pickle juice is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, have energy and enthusiasm when you're saying it. If you're yeah. like, eh, pickle juice. You know? <laughs> like <laughs> your teammates yeah. aren't going to want to eat pickle juice. Yeah. If oh, well, actually our, coach, our team loves pickle juice though. So you try beet juice. Beaches. And it's all about that mental edge, right? If you're like coming out really relaxed, like, do you guys drink coffee? Yes. Yeah. No. So instead of coffee, maybe you're having beet juice. Yeah. And and it, maybe it's a little cleaner form of energy. You know, yeah. the more you want to get at a higher level in such a competitive atmosphere, the more you want to, you know, learn about it. So I just encourage you guys to keep learning in nutrition and then trying things. Yeah. Do not be afraid. Okay. Definitely. Good stuff. All right, last thing, and then we'll let you go. I know it's cooking in here. So yeah, give a little wave. We have Ms. Brooke Buckner and Alex Young from the University of Cal, ex-Wave Beach players here. What is the key to life? Super loaded question. I've been asking this to almost all my guests, and I'll give you a second to think about it. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's the key to beach volleyball for you guys on this topic, or you could just go, man, I really think this about life. Um, I, w- I kind of have like a weird outlook or not weird, but definitely different. I would say like if something happens to me, like good or bad or something, like I don't really think too much of it. I'm just like, oh, well, like in a couple of weeks, like it won't be, it won't matter as much as it did in that moment. So like if something goes bad, I'm like, oh, you know, like it's okay like life goes on like stuff happens and like not just not thinking too much about things and like just enjoying like little things like going on a walk like saying hi to people or like seeing a dog that's like really cute or something and being like oh my god cute dog or something but yeah (laughs) a little lighthearted yeah free-spirited i like it yeah what happens if you get aced like four times in a row or or you have has that ever happened? Let's go. Let's oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's go into this. So let's get, dive a little deeper with the beach volleyball. So you're in a game and you're not playing well and you are you have that mindset. Are you able to reflect on, whew, take a breath, yeah. like it's just beach volleyball or do you get worked up or like how do you work um, through that? So I'm like, I like to like make a joke out of stuff and Love like that. lighten up the situation and like I first I would like maybe like go clean my glasses or like fix the end line and like try that and like take a break and be like okay like get it together like get a pass like you're fine um but like that like how you just said that yeah like just kind of (laughs) like like if your partner's stinking or you're stinking you yeah be a little comical yeah have some humor yeah or just like go up to my partner and be like hey like i'm obviously struggling a little bit right now so like could you please help me out (laughs) or i like that yeah but Mm. adding a, i think the word is levity adding a little levity to the situation levity oh. yeah that's a vocab word i learned in high school <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> levity i thought you were gonna say my mom's name <laughs> no, no, no. um okay brooke key to life alex said kind of being lighthearted, making lighter of the situation to sum it up 
Um, I would probably say that your relationships that you build are really important. I think that's a huge aspect in living life to the fullest. I think I'm super independent and I'm totally okay with being alone. But the more relationships and the more I've like built my team, it's what my dad likes to call it, um, the more joy I'm finding in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and just leaning on other people, being there for them. I think I get a lot of fulfillment out of like um, the relationships that I have in my life. So um, just like there's so many things that I look back on. I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I look back on so many things and like I don't even remember actual events. I remember like the people. Yeah. So that's something that I'll like hold on to forever. Cherish forever. Love it. And <laughs> that's why we're all here, right? Because yes. of our relationship, exactly. from, you know, four years ago. Seriously. And me understanding that you guys are great and, you know, wanted to invite you on something that, you know, is probably outside the comfort zone for a lot of female that I've coached or, you know, mm-hmm. in any sport coming over to. And it's just super cool that you guys were like, yeah, let's do it and support the brand, the podcast, and then also inspire other youth female athletes to you know elevate their game because if you're not doing your job and you're focused on other people and you know you're not pulling your own weight your team's gonna be like dude step it up bro yeah Yeah. (laughs) true true cool well best of luck you guys are going into your junior i'm gonna be a sophomore I'm a junior. Junior year. Mm -hmm. Big years for you upcoming. I know. All right. Well, hopefully we see you on ESPN. The (laughs) College Beach volleyball season is in the spring. Yes. So you guys are kind of in the off season. Mm -hmm. So have a good off season. Enjoy. (sighs) And then you go back to school and fun. Fun, fun, fun. A lot of spinach. Yeah. A lot of spinach. (laughs) spinach. All right. Well, if you like the podcast, feel free to subscribe on YouTube. I know Brooke and Alex are about to do that right afterwards. And you can also (laughs) check us out on a plant-based production on Instagram. All right. Thank you. Have a great day.